Hi, this is an update to my holiday bulbs, Christmas bulbs, whatever you want to call them, um, that I've been working on. These are the Bluetooth connected uh, bulbs that I have uh, using the Parallax Flip, which is a, a dip um, board that they have with their, their propeller chip on it. And so what I had been creating is uh, connections into it. So I have it coded so it can accept certain commands to control RGB LEDs that are inside the bulbs. And then I have the Bluetooth module over here that can accept the commands remotely. Um, I have a Python script that I've been using to command that, uh, to control that interface from the Pi. I'm using Raspberry Pi to control that out using RF comp and uh, blues for that connection. And then what I've done on top of that is I'm using Flask right now um, so I can get a, a remote web page. So I can connect that either through a PC or through uh, say some sort of mobile device and then be able to control the bulbs that way. So that's kind of the end goal is to have uh, something like that. So on my, on my Pi, I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi right here. Um, I have this file where I have environment variables to set for Flask uh, for it to get the run, tell my, the run file that I have and I have it set to debug so if I run into problems and then I have a config file for that as well. And then to run that, uh, set host 0 .0 .0 .0. that allows a remote system to be able to get access to this. Otherwise it runs local and then you can't get remote access to it. Um, there's some security things with that as well, but that's okay. I'm running this on a local IOT hub anyways. And so we fly, fire that up. It takes a little bit for it to come up. Um, so I'm using this for night right now. I might have to look at something else later, but you know, this, I had some examples, uh, that popped up and this allows me to, to run. I got flask and that's embedded in the Python scripts. And then I can use that to control my other Python scripts. So once it comes up, it tells me it's connected. Um, and then it's set there. Then I can come over to my browser and get a connection to it. And there it shows me that it's connected. And from here I can run my commands, let's say dem. And now I've, I've added the two bulbs, so I should have both RGBs to be able to go, go through uh, and then uh, display the colors as well. So it should go ahead and open up and it should send the command as before. And like that, it should go through the dim process for controlling those. And as you saw before that in another video that I have, my Bluetooth device so this is a temporary connection, so the script I have goes out, connects to the Bluetooth, sends a command, and then it waits a little bit and then kills off the Bluetooth connection. That way, uh, it's not connected all the time and, and creating problems and drawing. Right now, this is running off a battery pack uh, that I have, it's just a little brick that I have. So all this, the, the parallax board, uh, the two bulbs, and I, mean, I still got my LCD display and the Bluetooth device are all running off battery right now. Um, so I can set these to say, I don't know, red. It should go red. Yeah, it's all washed out. Uh, I have white. This should be really washed out. It's funny because it almost looks blue. Let me say blue. I have this all where it kind of runs through all the colors that I have listed on there. I only have a subset of the colors that it can go through, so they'll go back and forth for a little bit. And I do that. And then I could shut it off. So it should go off. There you go. And inside the video, you see this little uh, OLED right here. This is actually a snowman that I've created as well. So this is an OLED that I have that it's another it's from Parallax as well. Um, and uh, so on the Parallax device, the Parallax runs with multiple cores. Uh, maybe I'll put some description of that later, but it has eight cores that are on the processor and you can run uh, basically different processes on each core. So uh, all the processing for the o OLED is running on one core while everything else is running on on core zero or cog zero let's say that i keep saying core so i'm thinking i've been working with arm processors they actually 
use cogs. They call them cogs. So there's eight cogs. And they're more like independent little processors, and it's pretty interesting. So the, this OLED is running on an individual cog, while the rest of it is running on cog zero, which is basically the, the default cog. And um, I'm not quite sure if it came out clear on the video, but basically what happens is the, all the commands I'm doing to control the, the lights and, and such on the bulbs, on the ornaments, should have no effect really on what's happening with the OLED. So it kind of runs independently. Usually you have everything kind of in a sequence when you're running, you know, say C or something like that. So, um, or even on an Arduino where things happen one after another and you can't run parallel processes. So this actually, you're able to run parallel processes. So I got one running on COG1 and then the other stuff running on COG0. And so there shouldn't be much of a, a conflict. There is some sharing because it has a round robin uh, means of controlling what COG runs. Um, so, um, so that's what I have and I need to bundle this up and then put it together and hang it on a tree and, and, uh, see what I can do today. Well, tomorrow's Christmas. So we'll see what happens. So that's what I have so far.